Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I'm not sure what time zone you're in, but you are now in the jazz zone. But we are in the groove yard. And today we have an absolute awesome opportunity to meet a young man that as we began the jazz zone in its transition, I met this Don the One Bell. He's best known for his local jazz circles as a saxophonist extraordinaire for his smooth and melodic jazz, is uh, let his elect, ooh, electrifying explosion in his style of performing. And here we have on screen with us, Mr. Don, the one Bell. How hey. you doing this morning, sir? All right, how you doing, Mr. Roscoe Lee Owens? Yes, and sir. you know what? First of all, it's a pleasure to be back together as it relates we doing this thing in the groove yard because the opportunity to stay in visual contact with our clients and our people and our community is extremely important. And I wanted you as one of my first guests in the groove yard because you were one of the first people that jumped on Jazz On in the transition series. In fact, we started in your garage. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to say your studio. It was yeah, my garage studio. <laughs> And you go, start, right. you know. So let me just ask you to share with the audience what influenced you in the beginning, and we're going to start with your story as it follows through in terms of music and your manhood. Oh, wow. <laughs> my manhood and my music always clashed. So, you know, at least in other people's eyes, they, they, they felt like I wasn't being enough of a man because I was so much music, you know, which they didn't understand anyway. But in that, you know, the music started out when I was young, 10, 11 years old, and the opportunity came up for me to play um, a clarinet, which was really meant for my brother to play and he wouldn't practice. so. I started messing around with it and figured it out and uh, became a better clarinet player than he. So, and, you know, God rest my bro brother's soul. He, he's not with us anymore, but I, I, I attribute my starting to play because of he, him wanting to play. Does that make sense? <laughs> that makes, that makes, that makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of, uh, cause uh, 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 essentially, those are the things that make success. My grandfather, just to put this in, my grandfather uh, uh, gave Miles Davis' father, who was a dentist, the first trumpet because one of his sons didn't want to play. Miles Davis became extremely well known all over the universe. The the opportunity that you have uh, brought to so many in terms of your uh, performances as well. And uh, from there, how did you progress? You, I know you played in school and you kept on going and here we are. Yeah, a lot of school playing and uh, actually my last year of high school, I got to go on the road and go on a tour and play music with a popular group at the time and when that was done I, I had to go back and finish high school because i didn't have my diploma my mother stressed that get your diploma i don't care what you're doing now you know so i went back and finished high school with my sister you know <laughs> to get that diploma even though i was you know i was doing pretty good grades wise and stuff like that but i needed to have that of course you know yes and, and to move on from there you know i you know, went to school too and got some some college information about music. You know, the direction they were going really wasn't phasing me because I'd already played professionally. You know, and they tried to tell me how to do it, but it found out that it's who you know <laughs> more so than what you know. What you know comes later. <laughs> yeah. Who you know in the beginning is what it's all about. You know, and uh, anyway, that blossomed into me playing in a whole lot of bands around town. I was blessed to play uh, at little clubs all around LA, all the little, what they call it, the Chitlin Circuit. Yes, yes. And, and yeah, and played played all the Chitlin clubs. First I went and I played some of the bands I played in for free 
that's only because I had a day job. You know what I mean? So it wasn't yes, yes. About making that money, but I wanted to play and I wanted to gain my uh, a rep with everybody. And uh, once I started playing, I wasn't uh, trying to, but the club owners were offering me gigs after I sit in with a band. Yes. Like, oh, we got a jazz set on Sunday and we need somebody to lead that set. You got a band? I would always say, yes, I have a band, even if I didn't, because I knew yeah. some musicians and I just make a couple of phone calls and have a band. And uh, that's how things really got rolling. You know, this is what I wanted to ask about, because as a musician, I know you're an entrepreneur as well, because uh, you developed the Bell Storm. At, that Bell Storm started with actually the name of uh, my first project album. I called okay. the name of the album Bell Storm. Yeah. And everybody's like, what's a Bell Storm? What's a Bell Storm? Well, in the, in the islands, when a storm's coming, Back in the day, they have a huge bell they would ring saying the storm is coming. I, you know, prepare yourself. And it's a like a warning, <laughs> you know, bells. Yeah. Going. So I, when I saw that, I saw that in a documentary and I said, you know what? I, I like that bell storm. That means huge storm. Huge, something big is coming. So I, I stuck with it. You know, and that's well. You 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 certainly made an impact, and I see that it says John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, you know, Ray Charles, all of his Stevie Wonder, Grover Washington. These are influences, evidently, that you you were into the music and understanding what was going on. And and one thing I I'm, I'm going to say there is because what people saw and what you saw is like, hey, I'm going to keep doing what the father gave me. The, the talent and the desire to. Yeah, that's so. true. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, influences, I give uh, props to my, my stepdad because uh, when I decided I was going to play saxophone, which I actually got kind of thrown into it. First off, you know, I'm a clarinet player. I'm serious clarinet player. My, my teacher was like, I need a sax player. We got this thing coming up. And I, he asked me, come come into the band room after school. I want to talk to you about something. He didn't say what, you know. And he called me in, and I saw sitting there on the on the chair there a tenor saxophone. And I was like, whoa, what's that? He's like, yeah, that's that's what I need. And my, and uh, by the way, my dad's been saying you need to play saxophone. And yeah, yeah. playing that, he, he was talking okay. it down like that's girly stuff, man. You need to play it. <laughs> And I chose the biggest one that I saw at the time, which was the tenor okay. saxophone. Because you play all three. I play all of them. It don't matter. Baritone, yeah, yeah. all the way down. I can play them all. I mean, once you truly learn to play a saxophone, you can play any one. You know? Well, uh, but uh, I know I've seen I've, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mainly play alto, tenor, and soprano when I'm just gigging, you know. And uh, back in the day when I used to get a berry gig, me and a guy uh, used to share a berry, you know, because it wasn't a lot of berry work, but we shared a berry. And, and uh, if I needed, I called him, hey, man, I need to come get that berry so I can go do this baritone sax gig and I'll bring it back when I'm done, you know. And we do it yeah. like that, you know. And uh, that's how we got ourselves through a lot of gigs. So, you know, teamwork makes a dream work. And in, in that, I'm going to I'm going to uh, go to our producer and I'm going to thank those folks that are supporting our project and our program. And uh, let's just see what our sponsors and the people that are helping us uh, put this on and keep trying to take it away. This is what we got to say. You're a genius.
Hi, my name is Kijano Owens. I am co-founder of Success Express Marketing Solutions. Our business is cultivating more business for your business. I want to tell you real quick about our program that is one of the most comprehensive business development uh, online marketing support programs out there, which is the BASP, B-A-S-P, Virtual Assistant Support Program. This system allows you to operate and run your business while we help monitor and help you cultivate more business for your business online. Contact us at 909-686-1698 and visit us online at successexpressmarketing.com. Look forward to helping you take your business to the next level. Hey, it's John Owens here, you got it. The Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce, your Marino Valley Chapter Marketing Director. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is that you may be looking at this video, I want to say thank you, welcome, and we appreciate you for engaging with us with the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce as we create and cultivate business from the desert to the sea. Absolutely. Uh, in this time of, of business building, we'll transition to our virtual platform, doing amazing works. If you have a business out there, you, you have an idea, you, you are connected, you, you want to get connected. Uh, we are very interested in how we can help you. Let's have a consultation. Let's have a, a conversation about promoting your business. I will show a quick video about you know what our president, Mr. Richard Wallace, uh, stands for, what the chamber is all about, and we look forward to your partnership. We believe that powerful partnerships make an impact, and we look forward to making an impact right alongside you. So I want to welcome you to be a part of the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce. We have 12 chapters from the desert to the sea. There's a chamber near you someplace so you'll be able to do business and fellowship and be able to find the contacts that you need. We help turn contacts into contracts. One of the things that we do, we give you access to capital. So if you're looking at participating in a business, come to one of our mixers at the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce. That's amazing right there itself. Mr. Richard Wallace, our esteemed president, leader, uh, visionary, absolutely honored to be connected to this gentleman right here, making a difference. As you heard him from the desert to the sea, turning contacts into contracts. The Black Chamber of Commerce, Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce, go to blackchamberofcommerce.org. Check us out right there. Look forward to seeing you soon. If you're in the Marino, Marino Valley, Hemet area, listen, Riverside, we're looking forward to making the impact. I'm right here, and we thank you for your time. You with the person that sent you this information. Let's make an impact together. As I said before, powerful partnerships make an impact. Here we are right back with our guest, Don, the one, Bill, a saxophonist extraordinaire. Hey, there you are, Don. You know, we want to pay uh, respect to our sponsors because in, in order to even get this happening, we have to have support. And I think what we said is teamwork makes the dream work. So I'm glad to be on your team as well, Don, for many years. And I'm going to take us back to uh your studio you know we moved through high school and what you were doing and how you learned and then when i met you it, it's like okay because you pulled a lot of folks together as you were speaking of earlier as we went through the jazz zone experience and i'm going to start with the fact that that shirt you have on that's the that wow. opportunity we did playboy jazz festival mm -hmm. in right. pasadena right so yeah, let's talk about your, your your journey as it related to the fact that number one you were playing and then you started as an entrepreneur developing not only your band but pulling a lot of musicians together for what we were doing in the jazz zone as well. Um, well, you know, come on, the, the beginning of that, you know, 
me, you, and uh, God rest his soul, Edwin Sankey, yes. and Karan Harrison, um, Dino Robert Sarah, Turner, Robert Turner, yeah. you know, and Ron Lee Davis on trumpet. And, uh, man, I mean, I to this day I still stop and I listen to that, you you know, and the type of stuff we were playing at the time was was it i'm sitting here messing my phone because i'm about to pull up something for you okay okay and uh i just gotta get you know there you go get to it get into it Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's so much uh stuff we did um we've we've done many we've had the brainwood art festival i want to say this which was very significant to me and to the American audience. Right. It was 9 23 2001, which was a week after 9 11, the bombing. And Ed Wing was on stage performing, completing his session, and the Don, the One Bell session was coming up next, but you walked on stage. And you both played Love Supreme. That was the hottest situation that I have seen. I kept it recording. It is awesome. Yeah. And I, I am so thankful because when you walked on the stage, you said, I don't know if you feel like I feel, but this is what I'm going to play. And man, oh, you yeah. went on with America the Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I took that, like most people, we took that bombing personally, you know, like. Oh, somebody trying to end, end this dream, you know, whether it be my dream or anybody else's dream, you know, I took it personally. And I, I remember that when I said that as much bustling around the people were doing, they stopped. <laughs> they stopped in their tracks, you know, when I said that. And I, they had stopped all the way up the street. Yes, yeah, they stopped and they, they stopped and they listened. Because yeah. when you play America the Beautiful, and then I think they went into Love Supreme. I said, "Wow, this yeah. thing is 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 a monster." You and uh, Ed Wing and, right. and, and uh, uh, Joe Smith on yeah. drums, um, yeah, and, and Bugs on bass. Yes, yes. Who we, we still play together now. Just going, yes, you know, Bugs. Bugs is is uh, steady as a rock. Steady yeah. as a rock. Not only that, I want to say because we went into Barbara Morrison's and you did a tribute to uh, uh, Macy O. Parker. Macy O. Parker, which yeah. was awesome. And I want to give tribute to one of your band brothers, uh, John, Papa John. Oh, Ooh. yeah. God rest his soul, too. Uh, God rest his soul. What a, loss, what a loss for the band, Bellstorm. I mean, you know, it was like he... We 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 have other guitar players we can call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But oh, Pop, Pop came in. I, I, initially, I had Robert Bullet Harris on guitar, and Correct. his schedule got a lot of hectic. His own things he was working on. So then I I called Pop, and funny at the t- the day I called Pop to play with me, Pop called answered me and said, "But I got a gig. I want you to play with me because he has his own band." And <laughs> and yeah. I was like. Well, then let's do it, whatever. And believe it or not, uh, the first day he played with me, that first day, earlier that day, me and Bugs did a gig with him. <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. With his yeah. band. And so it it kind of grew into that. Right now, my wife is in there cooking something. So if you hear snap, crackle, pop, that. Well, we're, we're all at home because that's, 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 the, that's the, yeah, but anyway, that's a blessing. Yeah, we that's a blessing. We we can do this from home, so I'm happy about that, you know. Um, but let's really quickly. I don't want to drag this on, but Pop uh, brought to us a consistency that for guitarists that nobody else brought. Nobody had uh, an, enough consistency going on in what they were doing, so that changed the game, you know. And uh, I decided, you know, you're now first call guitarist. You're number one guitarist with Bellstone. So, you know, he's like, cool. He's I hear so if you gig for me first, I'm not going to book a gig for myself. And he didn't. He, 
he became the consistent one, you know? Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. And that, that sounds like our story too, because when I was starting to do the jazz zone after the transition of my dad and several mm -hmm. of the old cats that was playing and we right. transitioned and I said, well, Don, can you lead this thing? Because I needed somebody consistent that had the entrepreneurial spirit that understood how to work uh, uh, as a team and how to lead. And so you provided that solitude, actually, you and Ed Wing, yes. and then uh, later uh, 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 Stephen Foster provided that solitude that you need to have in terms of moving anything forward. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah, well, I'm glad that, you know, me and Ed Wing's love for each other was, was strong and going way back. When he got to L.A., now, you know, Ed Wing's hair is white like my beard. But yeah, and when I met Ed Wing, his hair was as black as you know what I mean. Yeah, and he was as young and and super bad as he always was on guitar. And I mean, there wasn't no harps and all that stuff involved yet. It was just straight. He was like Charlie Christian on guitar to me. Guitar, so. yeah, he well. was like that. And then I was like, we start doing gigs, just guitar and sax, doing the Stan Getz thing. Okay. Did that for a long time and just just me and him. No drummer. Just Ed started playing it and I play all of the 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 the, the Stan Getz tunes and Astrid Gilberto tunes, you know. And he, he loved it. He's yes. like, this is all I want to do. I said, no, nah, Ed, I'm I'm ready to put a bigger band together. And so our first band, believe it or not. We put a band together, and within a week of putting that band together, we got a job doing a promotion for Miller Draft mm. here. We we got in Venice Beach. Mm. I mean, right away we had a big gig, and I met this guy from Miller, and he's like, "I need a band to be on the beach," and blah blah blah, and we're gonna, you know, have a party on the beach, and they, had, you know, back then they didn't fuss about beer being on the beach, you know, right. And, Wow, we <laughs> there were like maybe two thousand people out there when the word got out about that, and we played for those people. And from there, you know, me and Ed Wing stayed close to that. I'm I got his brothers were in the band. You know about his brothers, right? Yes, yes. They're super, they're super talented. Yes. Oh my God, he comes from talent. It's just uh, his whole family is just like this is it. This is this is the talent that nobody else is gonna even get have an idea about you know everybody was trying to play everybody everybody was good and i was the only black guy in the band ah. yeah all asians oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. And, oh. and i was the only black guy in the band but it worked we worked a lot we did a lot of we got more work than we could handle you know and everybody went through their little changes and i ended up again out there kind of on my own and, and and trying to get stuff together and around the time i guess i met you i'd been through a lot touring um right before i met you i, I started working with the saxophone companies in designing saxophones um to, everybody tried to figure out how you can do how are you going to be one to design a saxophone well while i was in high school in the summers i worked a job for la unified school district repairing saxophones i was mm. supposed to be learning but i was picking it up so fast and then i would ask the ultimate question where can i get a book on this you know yeah okay because you were yeah. yeah it was about yeah more knowledge i want more knowledge i like this yes i always said i want to build a horn and i want to i want it to be like this i have small hands so <laughs> Like most Donald's, huh? <laughs> anyway, I got small hands and I wanted uh -huh. a horn like the French got. The American versions of horns were 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 everything or the French horns, they were really small buttons, but they were far away from my fingers. So I was playing on the edge of the the fingering pattern on saxophone mm. because of my hands. And they decided. Let's make the horns with bigger buttons. That was one of the things I threw in. Like, Try to make horns with bigger buttons. That's that's my 
big contribution to the whole thing. And when we started the Jazz Zone series, and you remember I brought them white horns out. Yeah, you I, did. I, and you know, I, especially I specially designed by Tom Bell. There you go. Yeah, I saw right. you know, yeah. actually your, your new your new horns was coming out. Uh, 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 Ed Wing had transitioned to not only play the guitar, but he started playing the zither. And you know, we started, oh man, it just became a, a thing. What I want to do, I'm gonna, because we have such history, we have to come back and follow up with a, with a, with a next show too. I'm gonna let Kijana show a few of the uh, uh, supporters and uh, uh, people that are supporting us through oh, these yeah. commercials. And, and uh, please just show the audience who's supporting us in this Jazz Home uh, series from Welcome to the Jazz Zone. Allow the Jazz Zone to make the next event enjoyable and entertaining. The Jazz Zone is great for private parties, weddings, festivals, fundraisers, grand openings, and corporate affairs. Move up to the next level of entertaining with the Jazz Zone. Check out our website at jazzzone.net. That's J-A-Z-Z-Z-O-N-E.net. Or call the Jazz Zone at 626-798-6848. For those wonderful commercials, Kijana, that not only do you play them, you put them all together. That's a fabulous uh, talent that you have. Let's bring on Don Bell, and we're going to close this out. Don, the one Bell, actually, not only were you in those video, that video production, you made that video production. I know your skills not only in music but behind yeah. that computer as well. And I'm thankful for all of those uh, things. I'd like you to say something last as we as we leave this session and promise the folks we're gonna come back and continue this session with you as well. Okay, um, well, if I, I'm gonna get this in. Um, hopefully in uh, the month of October, we'll be doing the uh, Mazatlan Jazz Festival. 
if all things goes well and everybody keep their mask on and get us to like they say 75 percent free and back in operation uh We'll, we'll be doing that. You can go to uh, MazatlanJazzFestival.com if you want to get any information on that. Um, tickets are out there, and they have uh, great packages for flights included and, or or bus rides included. They have all of that set up. Um, I am only I'm a part of the technical committee of that festival as well as going to be a performer on the festival. I'm pretty much going to open up the festival, which is great. For the band Bellstorm. And uh, you know, I have to give props to uh the jazz zone for getting me used to working on a big scale. You know, I, I'm not gonna forget any of those concerts. I still have the live recording of us. Let me see, let me just see if it plays. Let's see. Oh, yeah, check this out, Rascal. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, it's a ride back there. Huh? Yeah, that's Karan Harrison. Yeah. Karan Haley Harrison. Yeah, um, and uh, Robert Turner. Yeah, Robert Turner, Rob Lee. Uh, no, no, this is the small unit. Just me, oh. Karan, and Robert. And on bass, um, I gotta say, remember who bass player was. But uh, we were just out at the um, at the That's aquarium of the Pacific. That's yeah. aquarium of the Pacific. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, I right. Wanna... The aquarium of the Pacific out of Long Beach. Yes. yes sir. Fantastic. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have Don the One Bell come back with us as more, and maybe he'll have a few of his guests as well come on with us. People that have been on his team with the Bell Storm and that. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come into your living room or wherever you are through the Groove Yard. My name is Roscoe Lee Owens, and we appreciate the opportunity. Mr. Kijana Owens, you've done a great job as a producer for this particular a podcast. It's the Success Express podcast. If you would like to uh, participate with us, please connect with Mr. Kijana Owens and uh, uh, be of support to one of the podcasts from the Success Express podcast studios. Thank you again. God bless you and your family as well, Don Bell. I'll see you on the next episode. Hi, my name is Kijano Owens. I am co-founder of Success Express Marketing Solutions. Our business is cultivating more business for your business. I want to tell you real quick about our program that is one of the most comprehensive business development uh, online marketing support programs out there, which is the BASP, B-A-S-P, Virtual Assistant Support Program. This system allows you to operate and run your business while we help monitor and help you cultivate more business for your business online. Contact us at 909-686-1698 and visit us online at successexpressmarketing.com. Look forward to helping you take your business to the next level.